We've entered the land of asthma attack, borak, pneumonia, and Noah's Ark. Lord have mercy on our souls. Yo, people, welcome back to the YouTube channel. You already know what time it is. It's time for another video. Big up your damn cells in the building. Make sure you smash up the lights every single damn time and subscribe if you are new. Chelsea versus Ghent preview, right? The opportunity has demonstrated itself to us to win three games in a row at home and we can make it four this weekend if we do our job this evening. This is what we want to see, a comprehensive, comfortable, complete, composed performance. And it's not Genk, there's a difference. Belgian Pro League on screen, Genk, Ghent. Make sure you know the difference. One's first, one's third. We're playing the team that's third. And listen, listen clearly. It is got to be a clean sweep. When you go through this team, when you go through these teams in this table that I'm about to show you, my goodness gracious me, we should be dusting the floorboards with all of them. I'm not here to be disrespectful, but respectfully, not a single team here, not a single team here scares me. We should be going through this comprehensively. So it's a great opportunity to get the confidence into the boys. It's a great opportunity to continue the momentum in the winning run. It's a great opportunity for Stanford Bridge, Stanford Bridge to be entertained once again. And the manager has spoken in the press conference. Let's get straight into that. Now, he was asked some pretty silly Billy questions, okay? Cole Palmer is not in the squad for the Conference League. Neither is Lavia or Fofana. Neither is Benjamin James Chilwell. So, are we going to ask every single game in this competition why they're not there? Do we over rely upon them? Do we regret our decisions? We shouldn't really. We should probably ask questions about the players that are available. But hey, it's the first game. We'll give you that one. Now, first of all, with Ben Chilwell, he was asked, do you regret not having him in the squad? He emphatically said, no, no, he does not regret it. Now, again, Ben Chilwell played against Barrow off the bench. He's not going to get much opportunities to play to you know, push up that market value that we spoke about because if you can't play Conference League, which is a large portion, a large, a large chunk of the game time that you would have received before the winter transfer window, then yeah, Premier League, your third choice. Um, so it's going to be difficult for him. Uh, he's not really going to see the pitch too much. Away at Newcastle is the next game in our Carabao Cup. We're going to play our strongest team. We should and have to play our strongest team if we want to progress. We know how Newcastle are. They're a good team. They just drew Manchester City at home on the weekend at St. James's Park. And we need to be trying to win that competition as well. So minutes for Chilwell are going to be very scarce. But I don't, I don't mind because I'm very, very happy with Kukurea right now. He's playing brilliantly. He's got the tenacity. He's got the capacity. And then Renato Vega. What performances that we've seen off the bench from him. Getting really stuck in with his ground deals, his aerial deals. I think he left the pitch with the most in the previous match despite coming off the bench. He is a colossus at a young age. He's already, I mean, when he signed him initially, I was already getting good vibes. I was already getting good feelings because the profile just was perfect. It just made sense. You know, it's what we needed. We needed some aerial height in the team, some aerial duels to be won to compensate for the lack of height in other areas. We needed some physicality in the team. And also, technically, he seems really secure, really, really good base for someone that can go on and develop. And that's really, really what was needed after losing Lewis Hall, who I rate really highly, as you guys know. So really happy with his development. And I want him to get the game time in these games. I don't want him to be pushed to the wayside. I want him to play. So it looks like he will. And Cassidy was the man alongside the manager as well, speaking on his kind of future, saying that he didn't want to leave permanently. He was either going to go out on loan or he was going to stay. But in the end, he had some words with Moresco and that kind of gave him the confidence to stay, to train around better players, to hopefully develop in that way, because there are two ways to develop. It could either be game time or it can be to train around players that are vastly better than you and to learn quickly, like a Phil Foden almost at Manchester City. So he's chosen this route. Let's see if it works out for him. Again, game time will be scarce because Newcastle away is the next game in the Carabao Cup. But this is a game where I'd expect him to start, especially if he's going to be in the press conference, should be an indicator alongside probably a Drewsbury Hall who didn't make the bench manager confirmed it was for no other reason other than a selection, a decision. And I'd expect him to partner him in that pivot in this game. So but we'll get to the tactical pad in just a moment. That's the situation. Reese James is still out. They're going to look after and be careful with him until after the international break. But again, with Reese James, just kind of have him as a figure of your imagination. If you kind of operate in that way, you won't be, you know, worrying about Reese James and when he's going to be back and will it be this day, that day? Do you want a date? You don't get a date, right? You ain't getting a date 
you're in the texting stage when it comes to Reese James. You won't see him anytime soon, okay? So just put it at rest. <laughs> that's the way to go about it. Um, you'll save yourself a lot of stress. Um, so yeah, that's the situation, situation with Reese. We know there's no Lavia, there's no Fafana, there's no Palmer, and the rest we will get into. No Chilwa. Chukwameka, could we see him? We'll get to the tactical pad, but yeah, like I said, this should be a routine win at Stamford Bridge. It should be a confidence builder, and I'm not too concerned. Not trying to be cocky, not trying to be arrogant, not trying to be too overconfident, but I feel like in this type of fixture with the team and the quality and the depth that we have, I should be able to have my shoulders pretty broad and say, we'll get the job done. But let's get into the tactical pad. Let's quickly get into the team I would like to see. So as you can see on the tactical pad, let's get into this section of the video. We've got Badi Ashur, we've got Tosin and Dasasi in the middle. Um, with Renato Vega, we've got Cassidy, Drewsbury, Juan Felix ahead with M Mudrick, Neto and Nkuku up front. Now, that's what I wouldn't be surprised to see. That's what I kind of expect, right? Um, we've still got the clinical nature of Nkuku up front to finish this game in the first half. We know the manager prefers to maybe play the senior or the first team players from the get-go, give them the minutes that they need and then bring on the academy guys off the bench, George Achampong as he did against Barrow. That could be the case. Um, but yeah, how he uses Renato um, Vega is going to be very interesting because we know Drewsbury Hall Cassidy is kind of your pivot off the ball and that's your situation in your system off the ball. But will he use him as someone that kind of underlaps Mudrick or will he use him as someone that inverts and lets Drewsbury Hall move forward into the attacking midfield position? That decision is going to be interesting because Mudrick's going to need to know who is he linking up with. Is he close with Drewsbury Hall as like a left-sided half-space attacking midfielder? And Drewsbury Hall's left-footed. So what I like about this combination is maybe you might get Drewsbury Hall overlapping Mudrick as well. You might get Drewsbury Hall whipping in crosses as we saw in pre-season, or he could be making those inverted runs in, you know, in the kind of left eight position, just giving that angle for Mudrick to either cut in and shoot or to play those reverse passes that he really likes. Or it might be Renato Vega doing that. It might be Renato Vega doing that. You know, it might be him being an inverted fullback that makes those runs that we saw Kukurea making with Sancho. And then Mudrik has the option again with the reverse pass or someone to use as a decoy to cut in. So that will be interesting to see which one he goes with in that regard. But outside of that, it's more, you know, player for player. Um, will we see the likes of uh, Achampong get involved. So if I was to take the Sassi out of this team, put Tosin into the middle of the defense, and this is what I would prefer. This is what I would prefer. I'd get Achampong in. I'd like to see him play from the start because I think he's a really talented player. But again, it's up to the manager whether or not he thinks he's ready or not. Um, you could also, if you really want to throw some extra fire on the wood there, you're going to go and put Chukwemeka into this team as a 10, and you're going to put Felix on the left. And what you're doing there is you're, you are getting Mudrik out the team, even though he did have a nice performance in the second half against Barrow with Neto, getting the assist. But you're giving Chukwemeka the opportunity to demonstrate his talent, his ability, because again, we purchased him 20 million. And if we're not really going to give him, you know, a uh, long-term position at this club because we are just completely claustrophobized, <laughs> claustrophobized, claustrophobic the position that is the 10, then at least, at the very least, you got to give him game time in the conference league so he can prove his fitness for one to teams like Crystal Palace and B, show his quality to teams like Crystal Palace if they want to come in on a permanent transfer in January or in the summer. Who is going to need their permanent moves? Who's going to ask for their permanent moves? It could be Mudrik, it could be Chukwameka, it could be many players really because they might not get too much game time. As we know, we got Carabao Cup games against Newcastle away. These guys won't play that game. So they're already running out of minutes as it is because we didn't get a good draw, an easy draw. Um, so that could be an option. And, and Chukwameka was good off the bench in the cup game. I think he's a really good talent. And it would just mean that in regards to, if I can get all of this um, arrows off here for a second, that would just change the dynamic on the left. Because for me, if you're going to play Felix on the left, you've got to have him centrally, as you can see on screen, which means Renato Vega is going to have to do some overlapping. Um, and then... And if not him, if not him, you maybe get Drewsbury Hall doing some overlapping. One of them to give us that left foot on the on the wide area to give us an option because we know that Felix is better in these 10 positions and you can still have your build up 3-2 and you can still have your two players in the half space. And this is how we genuinely, generally like to, to kind of operate. But like I said, 
it's a bit different with Felix because he's a player that is better in the half spaces, better in central areas. And we saw it with the assist for Nkuku, little relationship potentially building there as they play a bit closer to each other, the give and goes. I would love to see Felix Chukomeko and Nkuku linking up. I think it would be brilliant to watch. So you let me know in the comments down below, who would you pick, who would you select? That's all the options I've got on the table for this game. So there you are, guys. That's the tactical pad segment of the video. Make sure you smash up the likes, make sure you subscribe, and I'll see you guys for the watch along. Big up your damn selves and a bit, people. Peace.